so we are in Huntsville, Ontario, Canada. Lionel's getting ready for 70.3 tomorrow morning. So we're going to see how he's feeling before the race. Ugh. Are you feeling ready? I'm feeling tired. Can you share with us what you're doing right now? I'm going over my list. I like go over before the race. Like before the race. And it kind of has everything on it that I have forgotten at one point in the past. Or hope not to forget ever. And so then I think about the bag over there as I'm reading this and make sure that everything's in that bag that's on this list. Which it appears it is. So I'm allowed to go to sleep now. So what's the plan for the, for the race tomorrow? And try and catch some feet on that swim? The plan is to not swim poorly, and that's a relative term. And so for me, I'm looking to not thrash in the initial 100 meters. I'm looking to push myself hard, but not really hard in the sense that I'm going to be swimming poorly. And if I get on feet, I get on feet. And if I don't get on feet, then I'm not on feet. And then I just continue doing what I was doing. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I just want to swim to my my what my stroke allows. And then out of the water, I'm gonna get onto the bike and take the bike as a good opportunity to uh, continue to hone my hydration. And I'd say I'm pretty you hydrated tonight. Uh, I haven't weighed in yet, but I feel like I'm weighing like 170 pounds, which would put me. I need to use the washroom, but. I mean, I'm probably in a pretty eu-hydrated state. Uh, but anyways, tomorrow I'm going to try and implement... Share with those of us what eu-hydrated means, for those of us who don't know. Eu-hydrated is a word that I learned about not in the not-so-distant past, which I believe means hydrated above, uh, I guess, normal, normal limit, like a camel. And the human body doesn't have the greatest ability to be a camel, but it can be a camel for about, uh, I mean, safely, I think about a kilogram anyway, whereas of water weight you can store. So that's, that's what I'm aiming for. And it's not really supposed to be very hot. I'm, I'm more or less just doing this as a preparation for the Ironman, because that's really in the back of my mind what I'm always training for. So I'm using this race really as a, as a good training opportunity for uh, Kona. So on the bike, I'm going to consume a bit more fluid than I did in Montrembon. Montrembon went well. That was two weeks ago, and I consumed uh, three bottles on the bike there. This time, I'm using a new uh, a new type of uh, nutrition. It's a custom blend of nutrition called Infinite Nutrition. Actually, the Canadian arm is based in Windsor. And so I mean, I'm gonna utilize that. I'm gonna consume, hopefully by the end, we'll have consumed four bottles on the bike, which will total, uh, you know, at best, I'd say 1.4 liters times two. So 2.8 liters on the bike. Uh, and it's supposed to be a little bit warm. So my sweat rate will probably be uh, higher than that. So I'm still gonna come off the bike in a deficit, likely. And then on the run, same thing. Um, I, if I find myself in a situation where I'm in the lead off the bike, then I'm, I'm definitely going to run uh, a lot more controlled than usual. Not not super super hard like a seven like I would normally do like I did a Montreal because once again I would like to use this as a good learning day for for new, new Ironman nutrition. So um, once my new, my goal is to at each aid station slow down quite a bit like I would in an Ironman and actually drink the cups of water as opposed to sp just spill them all over my face. So I also have, I'm going to use the hydration belt this time. And inside the hydration belt will be my sort of hot hot mix which will contain all my calories and my, my electrolytes. And I'm basically looking at each aid station to take um, two ounces per aid station of, of I got 20 ounces there. So approximately 10 aid stations, so uh, 20 out, two ounces at each aid station, and then along with at each aid station, two cups of which I'll drink completely. 
So this will be the first time really ever that I really try and implement a solid hydration plan, an Ironman hydration plan. It's not. It's really not going to be significant. Seventy point three. That's not the point. Um, the point is to to see if it works at a higher intensity that I'll be operating at than in the Ironman. Uh, if I can execute it well here and still perform well, uh, then obviously in the Ironman it's gonna it's gonna work really well uh, at a slower pace. So. So that's the goal for tomorrow. And obviously, if I don't, if I'm not in the lead off the bike, then uh, screw the stupid hydration. I'm gonna go as hard as I can on the run until I find myself in the lead. And then, if if at that point I feel that it's all right to 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 go and try and do the hydration analysis, then I will. And if not, then I'll keep running hard. So nice. Well, we'll let you get to sleep, and uh, we'll uh, check on you in the morning. All right. So it's uh, kind of a foggy morning here in Muskoka. It is about 5.50. Lionel, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling rested. I got uh, probably nearly eight hours of sleep last night, aside for, from the uh, Fourth of July celebrations that were happening around 10 p.m. That woke me up for maybe half an hour or so. But uh, other than that, I got a good night's sleep. Feeling much better this morning than I was last night. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, just uh, ready to execute the plan. I see they're having a good race over in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. So that inspires me to want to put together a good race myself. So uh, so yeah, the only development I'd say that has occurred between now and last night is that I was going to use my Ironman hydration on the run, but my my bottles, I had a look, I should have looked before, but I had a look at my bottles and they're all full of mold and stuff, so I've decided to just um, just practice implementing the slowing down at each aid station as if it was an Ironman and taking in a good two cups each aid station, but I won't have my sort of hot mix uh, in the bottles, so that'll be the only difference, but that's something that if I can, the crucial part is slowing down and drinking from the cups fully. I know I can drink from the little hand bottle, so that that'll be you have to uh, wait for another day to try. But uh, so yeah, that's it. Feeling good. I'm ready to go. All right, I'll try and catch you on course uh, during the race. Get a few shots, and we'll talk to you after the race. All right. <laughs> Seventh place, 430 back. Amarelli leads. Average four and a half minute deficit, and uh, 
and then I got onto the bike and I mean, it, it didn't surprise me that my legs did not feel great, like really didn't feel great. Um, I've been pushing it really, really close uh, to the race in, um, in training, so I did a really hard workout on Tuesday, both on the bike and the run, and uh, obviously that's pushing it a little too close, so I'm coming to the conclusion. Um, so I actually pushed less power here this year than I did 2013, but um, I would say my power meter in 2013 was a lot inaccurate or whatever you want to say. Um, so I came into this with the intention of trying to break the bike course record and, and pushing 360. I ended up pushing 333 and uh, I thought the bike course record was completely out of, out of my reach. And then I started at about 10k to go, I started to say, wait a minute, I'm still on pace, like I'm actually ahead of schedule. And uh, so I started riding, uh, picking the pace up a bit. And uh, unfortunately, I think I missed the record by like four seconds or something. So that's unfortunate. But uh, oh well, I have something to uh, strive for uh, next year if it's still a pro race. Uh, and then out onto the run, my intention if I was in the lead going out onto the run was to execute my Ironman hydration strategy. And that's what I did. So each aid station, I slowed down. I, I took two nice full cups of, of either Gatorade or Coca Cola. And I made sure that I was moving slow enough that I could drink the whole cup. And, uh, and I took a gel at 5K and a gel at 15K, and uh, it was good. It's probably the most clarity I've ever had in a race. Had no mental deficit whatsoever. I mean, obviously the pace starts to hurt uh, when you get. You know, it's a long bike ride. It's, it's a long run, so you start to feel like you don't want to do it anymore. But. Uh, but that's to be expected. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy I was able to execute the, the hydration strategy. And on the bike, it's by far the most I've ever drank on the bike. I actually drank 2.8 liters um, along with, I did my exact Ironman hydration strategy at 30 watts more than I intend on pushing during an Ironman. So obviously I can hold it. Uh, I will be able to hold it from the Iron Man, so I'm excited to. Everything's moving in the right direction with the hydration and the nutrition. I'm just excited to, uh, to put it to the test on August 16th in Montreal. Box. So, despite not having your fuel belt, the plan still went. Accordingly. Well, the only the only downside was that I didn't get to use my my hot mix uh, that had more calories and more sodium in it because uh, I would have been sipping on that in between aid stations. And when I get to the aid station, I would have just taken water. This time, I took Gatorade and Coca Cola. So. Um, but that, I, that, there was no challenge there. I know I can drink out of a little bottle. The challenge is slowing down and drinking out of those cups during the during the run, uh, which is something I never do in a 70.3 because I'm running very fast and it's difficult. You spill the cup and everything. You, you barely get any water into you. So uh, it was a very good learning experience for me today. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And it was great to come back to this race. It brings back a lot of memories from 2013. So yeah, it was a good day. All right, next up, racing two weeks. Yeah, excited. See you then. Yep. Here's Lionel having a drink of his uh, post race recovery. Drink beer out of a straw. Let's get real here.